I really want to know which team fight comp is better. Just straight up. Is it going to be this Tempest or is it going to be the Firebrand? And, and which one is going to have the advantage? Oh, I think and you're so about to find I, out, Roy. I think you're about I to find out. I will be very interested to see how Numb decides to play this. If they're going to try and sort of copy what Rank 55 did or if they're going to just sort of say, you know what? We think we can beat the team fight and let's do it. But either way, this is going to be NA games coming out first. So well, if Numb can even take one game here, they're going to be going into their EU set with a very big advantage. But of course... Hmm. Dark USA not going to be looking to let it go that easily. We will have Nas on the core Necromancer, as you mentioned. So that isn't going to be the Reaper for him there. But let's see what happens as we see at the moment. Gornet and Cran setting up around mid. The side node is going to be contested by both teams. Yeah, and we, we see a very similar rotational style coming out from Num, um, as, in fact, we saw from Rank 55. And, and once again, if it's going to pay off there, if they're going to be able to get a quick kill onto the uh, Condition Revenant, that would be good. They are able to uh, nearly get the decap there away from Grim. However, Beyond pluses in on that Condition Thief and certainly gives Fly a bit of a problem. And he actually, he actually might end up doing that. He's able to just get a, off some stealth and a wriggle away to freedom. But that didn't work out amazingly for Ultra Num. They're now going to have to focus their attention on this team for, and go for a big push here because it is going to be just the standard duel which in theory shouldn't really go anywhere both necromancers popping that lich from some big damage so far ultra maybe a little bit ahead in terms of health bars right now and of course eventually that firebrand will run out of cooldown so i think the tick is um, you know the the uh, clock is ticking right now for dark usa in this team fight and one big thing uh, you know keen difference i'd say to note here as well is that beyond is actually playing conduit thief as opposed to the toker who was playing power but here we are going to see the first potentially kill of the game as grimjack is going to go down here in this 2v2 with fly and floody into beyond and grimjack and i don't think beyond is going to have any potential to get that res so fly is now going to make his way over to mid where he will be able to plus gornet and cran gornet actually taking quite a bit of pressure from nas and moves doing a pretty good job in this beyond does match it though he realized that kill wasn't going to happen he gets a very nice burst onto gornet gornet might actually fall he is going to go down cran obviously going to be able to have the glyph he does blink away to avoid getting interrupted oh. he is going to be able to land that but really nice job there from dark usa to get the damage out and spike it down. There's still quite a bit of pressure coming out as well. They're really looking for him beyond going for that pressure with the Kanye Thief first. Cran's trying to peel for him. We do see Fly coming in off the side, but Gornet's still going to be low. Moves, however, taking quite a bit of damage now. Fly has gotten into this game, but Gornet going to be pushed down beyond, still looking for the kill. He just cannot find it. Yeah, that glyph, it really is such a momentum breaker. A combo break from Cran, getting that Necromancer back up, reestablished, and now finds on a good amount of health and moves. He really doesn't have anything much left, but actually a massive spike from beyond gets the job done there and eliminates that Necromancer for good this time. Of course, things aren't looking too horrible on the map right now uh, for Ultram. They should be able to get a bit of a job done there. Actually, Steel is uh, actually winning the node uh, in the 1v2 there on his Ranger, forcing that DK, but he won't be able to hold that for very, very long. And Floody now finds himself in a 1v3. He's going to have to get the hell out of there. However, uh, Cran does arrive to try and pressure him, but that Elixir S is going to just barely save Floody. He's going to have to kite a little bit, otherwise he's going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble right now, taking a lot of damage from those three Dark USA members. And I think we're looking into a very, very spicy game. But Roy, I, th I think you're going to end up disappointed. We're actually not seeing a lot of team fighting right now. It's a lot of kind of skirting around the issue and rotating around the map instead of these big 3v3s that I know you want to see. Yeah, and I gotta be honest, I'm pretty impressed with Dark USA so far. I think that they at, losing that kill in Grimjack didn't shake them all, and they actually turned it into their advantage. And part of the reason is I think that getting the kill in Grimjack certainly is, of course, it's a kill. It's going to be a good thing there for Ultranum. But all they got out of it was basically a side note that they had already neutralized. They didn't really get anything. We do see the first Skymer of the game going for free here to Dark Ooh, USA. Oh, gets hit by but as well. <laughs> the, the, the kill that Dark USA was able to turn now onto Gornet there over at mid allowed them to really push out into the map a little bit more and control mid for at least a little while. And I think that's a much more impactful kill, especially because they were able to get it well after Grimjack had already respawned. So definitely, I think Dark USA going to be able to take that kill a little bit better here. However, that might not be for long. We will see mid going back the way of Ultranum after we do see the Skymer coming down. Cran going to be pretty low here. Moobs has a decent amount of pressure on him as well, but Cran might be in danger. He does use the Mist for him to come up. Gornet now going to, into the Lich and dropping a well as well to try and peel for him. Beyond needs to make sure he doesn't get taken out. The Thieves' Guild going to be propped up here, but a lot of the damage is going to be utilized and turned away here. Moobs actually taking quite a bit of burst here. He needs to be really careful. He doesn't have his RF. He doesn't really have any cooldowns left besides stand your ground, so he's going to be forced to kite away, and we will see Fly pretty isolated off to the side. Cran trying to get back up with his Thief to regroup. Nas now going to potentially be the one going down as Gornet puts pressure on him. Fly going in for the burst. The Fear going to come out, and that all the, is left for the Necromancer is going to be his Shroud. Moobs still very pressured, just can't feel beyond coming in to try to keep his teammates alive as Cran is going to eat quite a bit of burst from the conditions, but Nas just under 10%. Cran will fall first, though, and now it's going to be up to Gornet to try and get the res. 
I, th I think we're seeing Ultram just struggling to follow up on these these pressures, right? Not They're not able to really get that. They get a lot of damage off on these players. We see Nos very low, moves very low, but Dark USA simply kind of WASDing to freedom in a way, you know? Like, they're just uh, walking away, and, and and Ultram not able to follow up and actually lock down some of those kills. So, I mean, it's, of course, both sides there. Nos now does get eliminated, but actually, so is Fly, and I think, oh, what you know, the Rev knocks that away, and we're going to see the storm going out for Cabalanca. Can he get it? He is going to get it, and that's going to rally Fly. That is some quick thinking there from Cabalanca, once again, demonstrating that he is the sleeper player on Ultram there, putting in a lot of work for his team, and certainly uh, bringing them back into this game. A little bit of contention there to get that momentum once again in favor of the red team. This is pretty worrying from Ultranum's perspective, though, because their team fight right now is not looking nearly as good as it did yesterday into rank 55, and obviously that was, you know, strictly into another team fight comp, so they, they're forced to team fight, or they really have to, and, and they want to, but, you know, Dark USA, they're, they're, they're matching them pretty well, and while, you know, we maybe haven't seen a... a, a, a you know, concrete team fight yet, we have seen 3v3s, and we have seen them actually fighting, and we've seen Dark USA more or less coming out on top here. As we see a plus now, Fran trying to rotate into Floody, but so much condition pressure coming out from Beyond, and maybe that's the difference. Maybe Beyond with this condition thief is just too much for Ultra Num to handle right now, and Dark USA, honestly, are, are just doing a really nice job of shutting down either the team fight and the rotations from Ultra Num. What a glyph from Cran Denying to bring the shadow from Beyond and going in for the shadow step stop as well there, keeping his fight alive, keeping Floody alive here, and we will see the air overload coming out, and that's going to push them back away from the node. We will see Skyhammer coming up, though, and it is going to be contested this time. We do see Capablanca, as you mentioned before, going in, but he's going to be one versus two on that node, and they really need to get some help in to get him out of that trouble. This is a fine 1v2, though, for him, I think. I, he, I don't think he's too upset about that. And we now do see Cran moving into the mix to hold that quite firm, and that should now start to go eventually in favor of Ultram, and that would certainly be a really nice pickup for them if they were to get that. That would slow down uh, Dark USA a fair bit. They are, of course, still behind Behind on the map, down by 30 points, and Cran in a little bit of trouble. Of course, the uh, point C now being captured by Ultra, and point A looking like it might end up going there as well, but beyond looking to plus into Floody, that could be very, very dangerous indeed, and Cran still in a lot of trouble. Nos, uh, I think, doing a great job of pressuring the Tempest here in this match. Absolutely, and so far, it, it is an even map, so so to speak, as we will see, obviously, Ultra regaining some ground here. They're about 15 points behind, but with Floody going down and Cran not really in a position to help him out, that is probably going to be the map swinging back the way of Dark USA and, and continuing to hold on to their lead. Moves a little bit low here into the 1v1 versus Capablanca, and we should see Capablanca eventually win that, but I expect probably with the map advantage now, as Floody is going to be blood out here, probably we'll see a plus coming out. Cran getting forced away from that as well. He did try to go for a res, but he's not going to be able to. A really nice burst again with the Thieves Guild coming out from beyond. Cran might actually go down here. The Tornado keeping him away for a couple more seconds in the blink. Going to get him out. Fly maybe can peel for him, but he's actually going to plus the hammer instead, and Cran will live to see another day for now, but he's got to be careful. He almost went down there. He did, and you know, we, you, it's incredibly pivotal for Cran to stay alive in these fights. Like He is what holds together that team fight from Numb, right? Like, getting those glyphs, getting that massive one. Actually, water overload interrupted. Oh, Cran is in so much trouble and not able to get the glyph on uh, Fly either. Fly, uh, Cran was supposed to take the portal, so he wasn't able to get away with that. And yeah, things are looking very, very good for Dark USA right now. Suddenly connecting their damage quite effectively. And, you know, that Condi Thief, as you mentioned earlier, is certainly providing a lot of value. But I think just in terms of straight-up team fighting, Dark USA is looking ahead of Ultranum so far in this match. And, you know, the, if this Skyhammer comes through, that will be incredibly unfortunate for Ultram, and yes, it does. It gets captured, and that means all that hard work killing Steel Rage on point C is going to get reset, going to get thrown uh, all the way uh, in the trash. In the trash, indeed. And you know, one pretty important thing to note here is that obviously right now Dark USA looking like they might be able to take the game. Six minutes left are almost certainly going to be going to a timer game as it's just under 200 points here for Dark USA, but the points are very, very close. And while, you know, the game definitely could still swing the way of Ultranum, as we see Cran now pushed away here from his Revenant by Beyond and Nas and just be able to blink away. But Beyond on top of him, actually, that might be a downstate. The points obviously are important, right? And they do matter. And, and so we have to keep that in mind, obviously, going into the EU games as well. But right now, it does look like Dark USA have found a bit of a way to answer here this team comp fight fighting style of Ultranum, and they're really not allowing them to get out into the map very well. Cran, so pressured right now. He's, he's forced to go into the Skyhammer. Portal moves. Going to be able to contest that now basically for free, and we'll see Capablanca yet again going for the Skyhammer, but Nas is going to be here to plus him at least for a couple more seconds. It looks like he wants to get back out into the map and just leave his Firebrand to 1v1. Again, slowly but steadily, we see Ultranum trying to close that distance with the one node pressure. 
But again, Floody going to be plus here by Beyond. No answer from Ultranum as Cran tries to rotate to make sure his Hollow Smith stays alive. And Nas may have a chance to cap a B for free. Yeah, and that point C, once uh, now returning towards Ultra Number, we're going to see an almost exactly even game, I believe. Yeah, both of the teams on 198 points with a cap apiece. So it really all does come down to the next few moments there. Like, which team's going to be able to get a decap, maybe secure point B. Ultram currently a little bit ahead there with an infinite duel going on on the Skyhammer, but it's one that eventually Ultram will win. And locking that Firebrand out of these fights, it's certainly very profitable, I think, for Ultram there. Uh, especially when it is a winning matchup for Kawablanga. He'll be able to not only burn a lot of moves as cooldowns, but eventually force that kill and force the hammer to fall to Ultranum. And it's it's interesting that we see here uh, Grimjack, or not Grimjack, excuse me, Gornet here in this 1v1 against Steel as the decap now comes out. Steel doing a nice job with those not longbow knocks. It happens at the exact same time that Point A gets decapped, keeping the points exactly even at 216. Very, very interesting there, but... I I'm wondering why they have the the necromancer in the one v one, and I'm and I'm wondering if maybe it's because they've realized that they they just aren't really going to get those team fights that they were looking for, and so they don't really need Gr Gornet in those team fights. But still, I, I wonder if maybe Floody or potentially Capablanca would have a Cran better, better job yeah. there. Cran is going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he does again get the blink away, but Beyond still staying on top of him. Still the heal coming out for Cran, and I think we should be able to see him getting away. And Ultranum, as you mentioned before, going to be able to get that Skyhammer, but unfortunately. It doesn't really do that much to them. There were no nodes to neutralize, and there weren't really... Obviously, there was the 1v1 over at point A, or point C, rather, which is now going to go back the way of Ultram with that Skyhammer forcing Steel away, but I'm not sure if it really gave them that much. Floody, so very low. Cran desperately trying to appeal for him. He does... He actually used the Glyph... I, was that, a, was that an he early He was trying to precast. He was trying to make a highlight, I think, for us on the, in this game. But <laughs> unfortunately, it backfired a little, a little bit there uh, for Crown and Floody. does end up going down. But Ultram have found themselves a lead in this game. And timer is absolutely relevant. Still looking to get a decap in Dark USA, surging towards point C to get that job done. I think still gets a great knockback on Dagornit and might be able to get it. And certainly with Nos and Moobs arriving now, they might be able to get the job done. They're Crown now moving into Kness. Every single point matters right now. I think Ultram, maybe if they send a player over towards point B. They could actually kind of sneakily cap that. We've got the 2v2, mirror 2v2 over on point C, but it's actually going to go in the direction of Dark USA. Condi Thief from beyond, really providing a lot of value there, and Capablanca is going to find himself in a bit of a pickle. 1v2 into beyond, and Grimjack there too, so I think uh, this is Ultra must win this, and honestly, it's not looking good. Gornet already in trouble with no real cooldowns, and not a lot of life force either. He's going to have to back off immediately uh, from that point, and now Dark USA securing that point they're going to find themselves once again in the lead very very soon but actually wait is the hammer going to be free um for uh for Flutie? it is actually Flutie gets the hammer that's going to decap point c but wait oh, no one point. one point point one point in the lead now we've got to see ultranum get over to point a and Flutie realizing this is beyond is still going to be plushing into capablanca there he is, does he's he's kind of having a little bit of indecision there. He's, he's rotating around. He didn't go over to point A. I'm not sure if he just wasn't sure where Beyond was because of the stealth or if he thought he was needed elsewhere. But we are going to see him actually go plus into Steel now over at point C. But with one point difference and two minutes left in this game, it's really going to come down to the wire. Gornet, though, so very low. He might even die to condition pressure at this point. And kills Cran, irrelevant. Isolated from him. And, and yeah, that is going to be the downside on Gornet. Cran Cran, it. Does he have the glyph left? He does. he does have the glyph. And is he unable to use it to get Gornet back up on his feet? But obviously going to be behind in this fight. And again, a huge condition burst now coming out from beyond is onto Cran. Both of the players very low. They're not going to be able to continue to contest this node. And Ultratrum right now are going to be fighting to try to get side node control because middle node is about to be lost. Oh, but actually Grim in a little bit of trouble there. He's going to have to cut away. He might not be able to hold the node. No, I don't, I don't think he can. And actually, wait, it's exactly even, Roy. They capped the nodes at the same time. Now, Dark USA, just a tiny bit ahead. Um, in, in Well, exactly even right now, but a tiny bit ahead according to the uh, the Scoratron right now because of the exact timing of that. But, oh, I don't know, Gornet is going to have to back off that. And now, Dark USA might be able to force the issue on uh, elsewhere on the map too. So, Ultram, they've got a minute to do something good. Actually, that kill on Grimjack, Roy! That's massive! That's five points! That's going to put them in a winning state there, as long as the map state is held exactly even for the you, remainder you, of the game. Do you realize that point C got decapped at the exact same time that point B got capped for Dark USA yeah. as well, keeping the points even before the kill? Exactly. I, I mean, this is actually, this is maybe the closest game I've ever seen. This is insane. Grimjack dying, though, is the end if this map state stays the same oh, for the next fly might seconds, get a decap here. one kill could be all the difference that's mattered. Beyond does prevent potentially Fly from going into the decap, and he actually, he might be able to get it, but no, Grimjack's going to be there. And Beyond now plusing this fight, Cran already going to be low. This might be just the place for Dark USA to find the game.
They need Beyond. a kill. That's what they need. If Ultram can just hold off, they might be okay. But actually, Cran is going to go down. He mustn't die there. He's got to back off for a little bit. They've just got to stall this out. I don't think there's really enough time to get the cap. As long as Cran actually doesn't end up getting stomped out, it should be okay. And the Shadow Refuge res, it comes out. Cran is back up. And Ultram, it's five seconds left. They should be able to take this. It's going to go to a full timer game. Ultra Num win the game. There it is. Wow, what a close game. And Moob's dying there at the end, too. I, I mean, that was insane. The decaps and the caps happened at the exact same time. I don't, I don't even, it's ridiculous. The look at that timeline. The timeline that game. The time oh is insane. God. But just that last second plus able to eliminate Grimjack is going to win the game for Ultranum. Oh, and well, Ultram, they are going to be wiping the sweat from their brows after that one going into this second game. And I think they're going to be very happy with that result because this is, of course, on the NA region. So getting at least one win here is exactly what they want to have going into the EU games in the second half of this series. Yeah, um, once again, we are going to see a, uh, a push Coming out from Ultram, stealthing up there. And let's see if they send their Necromancer and Tempest. Actually, no, it looks like they're just going to go for a straight-up fight here. Going to move everyone except that Revenant there over to the Waterfall. They're actually maybe looking to veer over towards the Graveyard. And there we go, looking to maybe isolate one of those players, potentially. And I think, you know, one thing to notice is, as I think maybe Ultram's going to be very much wary of that Condi Thief. I think Beyond was doing a huge amount of work in this oh, yeah. last game. Uh, getting some massive pressure, particularly onto Cran and Gornet, actually. Uh, I think that Darkius, they're doing a great job of focusing down that Tempest, that support. Uh, and let's see if Ultram's able to play reactively into that and adapt to make this game a little bit easier. But so far, the opener going very well for Dark USA, securing the Waterfall, getting them an early point lead as the team fight begins here on the middle note. Focus coming out here from Ultra Nomada Moobs, who's a little bit split, but we do see a lot of counter pressure coming out here from Dark USA. But Moobs again gonna be targeted here. Fly going so low, and he's actually gonna be taken out, out by Beyond. The burst is gonna be good. Missed for him. Rez, though, coming out here from Cran. We do see Gordon here with the counter ledge to try and pressure them back. Moobs still gonna be pretty low. Fly does get back out, and Moobs now gonna be turning again, but he still has his RF available. There it is, gonna be procked up. The tornado from Cran gonna be able to get that full shroud now from Gordon as Grimjack is gonna be trying to put some pressure on some good CC coming out here from both teams. But Grimjack, Gordon, both gonna be low. Nas though getting pressured out as well and there's a lot of low health bars coming out here from dark usa as nos is almost taken out by the condition pressure he does the burst here coming up from fly it's going to force them to go for the res and they might be able to isolate grimjack now but he's still looking pretty healthy and fly now has overextended oh. he's going to go down i don't know if there's going to be a res Kren he oh, gets he it he down. actually gets I don't it believe dude fly going to be right back up again but he's still so very low and he's going to go down now for a third time i don't think Kren's going to be able to get this res he's starting to go for it but gordon isn't going to be on top of it. the let's coming out now from nos and that will be the first kill of the game after three down states from Fly, going the way of Dark USA, Nas still very low. We could potentially see them fight back into this as Floody is going to come in, and Nas will be going into the down state. CC pushes him back. They're trying to force this res. They're trying to stop the cleave from coming out, but I don't think it's going to happen. Nas will almost certainly go down. Beyond and Grimjack now going very low. The Glint Heal just barely keeping him alive, but the Thief one Dark USA is going to fall, and they're going to be able to take the fight back. Oh, that was such a... Oh, I'm not going to lie. That was such a hard throw from Fly there, Roy. I'm not going to lie. Like, that push yeah. was so greedy and just snowballed the entire thing out of control. His team was able to recover it just barely by grabbing that kill or not. Actually, if Moobs dies, that's a nightmare. Oh, great pull there from Moobs. Ten to that, but Floody is oh. opposite. And he gets it with a Corona Burst. Great kill there um, from Floody. Able to finish the... Wait, hang on. Don't greed. No, Floody. No! <laughs> kill it. He's got to finish that off. He throws the nades and he should be able to lock it down now as Beyond is just off respawn. Uh, Dark USA getting a little bit staggered still in the lead uh, for at least the time being, but Ultram is going to grab the quarry, leading to that si uh, double node advantage over Dark USA, and they're starting to pull ahead, and they'll be gaining on and matching those points very, very soon. Absolutely, and I mean, what a back and forth fight. Honestly, Fly just Again, I think overextending a little bit and, and not getting back to his Tempest after that Glyph Res really, really threw it away. But such a nice job from Floody to realize that the fight wasn't going their way, realizing that he was maybe wasting time over at Corey. He left, he got into this, and he was able to swing that team fight, and they were able to burst down Nas, stop them from being able to get any res potential. And as soon as they evened out the fight, it went back into their favor. They they lost the first player, but it was A, it was the Thief, who probably isn't going to have as much impact in terms of a long-out sustained fight. He'll obviously have a lot of impact in a, a burst fight 
there and able to burst targets down. But I, I think it wasn't the worst thing for Ultron. I mean, they were able to make it work and, and come back into it. And now we see another team fight brewing around mid as the decap here comes out of Waterfall from Fly. We will see Gornick going down, though. Kind of a surprise there. I don't know if Kran's going to have the glyph back up. He does, but it gets interrupted. And that'll be the kill confirmed on the Necro. And Dark USA, after their defeat there, they do come back into it. And, and they're able to take a fight back away from Ultronum. They are indeed, and Steel even getting that decap onto Capablanca is very, very juicy. And without the Necromancer, Ultronum is going to have to kind of play for the stall. They won't really be able to play for the win uh, there on the middle node at all. And we already see Fly trying to get away, but actually, he's getting a Necromancer to death right now by Nos. Good amounts of damage coming out there, and we're going to see Fly maybe look for a plus onto Steel there while they wait for Gornet to return. Gornet has now returned there, and actually, uh, we did see a good job there from Ultronum to hold on and Fly, you know, not really able to find value in this game so far, I think, for Ultranum. And he's kind of running around between these two nodes and maybe looking for a kill. I think Moves is going to be the target. He's going to go for a big backstab. Can he get it? He gets a good burst. But actually, no. Interrupted and shut down there. The backstab not really landing. And now Floody is going to get eliminated. The glyph might come through here, though, from Cran. He does get that good glyph there. No interrupts this time. And then suddenly Moves is in a bit of a precarious situation. But Floody is in trouble. He's got oh, he no cooldowns. Immediately, the huge burst coming out. And Fly is now going to be pressured out. Floody going down. Nas going for the cleave. They're trying to see if they can get Firebrand dead in the Stop comes through from Cran rallying both his players, but Fly and Floody still going to be in downstate. The damage there from Dark USA is still too much. They do get the hard res now on Fly, but Floody is still going to be in downstate, and they're still going for the cleave. I don't know if they can find this res. Grimjack and Nas going to be a little bit pressured here, but a really nice pull from Grimjack Beyond, dropping some shots from the top as well. Floody almost certainly does go down, but no, just barely they're able to keep him alive. And they should get the kill on Grim. Them, Grimjack goes down, oh, but Floody going to immediately rally. rally and Beyond dropping a Shadow Refuge as well. Might be able to get the Revenant out, but the air overload now from Cran going on top, and Grimjack will fall again. Nas is ready there for the res. Moobs coming back in off respawn. They get the Revenant back up into the game, and these points are still so very close. The <laughs> decap coming out on a middle node from Dark USA is going to isolate now Nar um, Ultranum's points, and Cran, he can't do anything. He's probably going to be taken out as well. We're seeing almost a repeat of the last game, Roy. It's just completely even right now. Uh, we see Dark USA do have a two cap over Ultram. They're starting to pull ahead just barely, but it is just so close. Ten points in it. Cran now uh, reasserting himself on the map with Gornet. They're looking to repush. They're getting a nice regroup. Indeed, Floody going to be in a lot of trouble there. Going to be in a 1v2 versus two devastating condition damage opponents, but this does give a brief opportunity for Ultram to maybe get a kill on Moob. You can see him getting very, very pressured already. Floody looking to push into Grim to at least contest that. But I think the three cap is almost going to come through right now for Dark USA here in Legacy of the Fofa. Can they maybe get a kill on Moobs? Tornado providing a lot of value for them. Getting that knock, but the stability is good from Moobs. He's able to hold that quite convincingly, but he's still so, so low. There's the renewed focus. But after that, he's going to be really running out of steam. He's uh, going through his cooldowns once again here, but still getting chased down very, very hard by Ultram. His team, Nos, coming in, trying to peel for him, but it's not going to be enough. There's the kill. The blood res is good, but is it good enough? Great knock right there by Moobs. Nos might be able to get that. No, not able to. Beyond now is here as well. Spamming that blind, and they should be able to get moves. They do get moves back up there. Good res discipline there. Coming out from Dark USA, maintaining their lead and not throwing the team fight. They might even be able to turn it around onto Gornet too. Cran, not able to quite keep him alive just yet, for at least for the meantime. Yeah, Gornet just able to survive, but yeah, as you said, really, really good job from Beyond to get that res, but unfortunately, Beyond now has been taken out. Capablanca on top of that with Floody dropping some grenades, and that will be the Thief Dead Steel. Going to be so very low, actually, coming into this fight for the first time that we really see him getting involved. He's a Signet of Stone, going to keep him alive just for a couple more seconds, and the Swoop going to get him away, but they're not done with him yet. Cran and Fly going to chase him down, and that's going to be the Ranger gun, but the points difference has amassed huge now. For Dark USA, about a 100-point lead. We do see the decap coming out on mid with the bleed here on Steel, but they've got a lot of points to catch up, and Dark USA have very handily taken a nice chunk out of Ultranum's points. And beyond already off respawn there, should be able to intercept Fly and stall this out for at least a little while. And you know, I think Fly maybe not looking to really fight into that Condi Thief. He's been really shut down by Beyond, I think, a fair bit on this server. So he's certainly struggling uh, a lot there. Now, once again, we see uh, Grimjack under a little bit of pressure, but his team, Nos and Moobs, able to very competently pressure for that. But Ultranum, they've now secured those two nodes. They've got to hold that for a pretty long time, Roy, right? about, you know, uh, to actually gain the lead. Oh, but fly with the decap and get there. Oh, that would be really juicy. Does he get it? Oh no! No, Almost. great intercept there by Grim, denying that. And Fly now finds himself cornered once again on the map. But he should be able to. Oh, actually, he's thinking of lingering. Actually, uh, maybe doing something into beyond to try and get that. While Grim pushes into the fight, Floody getting knocked.
it's about on the point there on the quarry. We see it slowly, um, slowly getting deke up there. He's not going to be using the mutt, the, the at the cart, because that is not allowed here on this game. And I think uh, once again, we've I think we've got to have eyes on this team fight, Roy, because this is where it's all going to be going down. If Ultram can win this fight, they should be in a great spot for the remainder of this game. But if once again we see USA go hard, they'll be able to maintain control and continue their victory march here on Legacy of the Faux Fire. But Moobs is the current target, I believe, for Ultram. He's very, very low. He's already used renewed focus. Oh, whoa! And he is going to go down there, actually. Can this kill be secured there? Good resin coming out there. I think the stealth, yeah, the stealth is so good, but the torn Tornado from Cran, no scopes, moves, knocks him away, and that is going to be a kill, and I think we're going to see USA disengage, and actually Nos might go down as well, I think we will, oh, this could be exactly what Numb needs to get back into this. Absolutely, and we still see a, a neutral map state right now, the note of peace and the one contested, but with the team fight one and two kills being bought out here now from Dark USA, Floody is going to be able to get the quarry back as Fly Pluses, and Beyond though is coming in, our Beyond very low, still trying to peel for him, get some nice heals coming out, and Beyond is going to be safe for now, actually nice knockback onto Fly too, and Fly needs to be careful, but Cran, as well as Floody in the vicinity, they should be fine, Fly able to go into his portal as well, and Beyond might go down, but Ultra do need to be careful, they don't give up too much still, they obviously have a huge map advantage with both Nos and Moobs being blood out, and Right now, what Dark USA need to do is make sure that they don't overextend, they don't lose any more players, because they still have about a 50-point lead, and they can definitely come back into it. Time certainly is going to be against Ultramum right now, but not for long if Dark USA don't get back onto the map quickly enough. All five players going to be respawned. Steel trying to aggress onto Quarry, but he's going to be 1v2. Yeah, this, I, I honestly think that Steel's build here is such an annoyance for Floody. He's not able to match it on the node one for one, right? He can, you know, he. it's not that he's dying as such. It's just that the knockbacks are too much. He's not able to sustain it and eventually gets DK requiring constant attention from Ultranum uh, to actually secure that node the entire time because they certainly need that two cap right now. And it's not easy for Floody to survive into uh, the uh, the Thief, of course, when he comes over the plus. The Condition Thief can shut down that horse with quite effectively, but now Fly is matching that, which is very, very good and we now start to see that point difference really really shrink there Gornet going hard with the lich great reflect there from moves once again moves finds him in a tough spot right now he's getting chains can he get to rf yes he can and cran actually might not going down here forced to pop obsidian flash not really having a lot of coordinates gonna have to lightning flash away there uh to safety and then channel a water over to restore his health but once again now we see that decap did come through there on to floody floody not able to sustain that and we're gonna see the two cap come out from dark usa the quarry now belongs to them grimjack eliminated here on mid, but Num, oh, do they have time to really get back out on the map? I'm not sure if they do. Floody, again, oh, he just got on 17 poison stacks on him, I think. That, well, that really hurts, I'll have to say, especially if you're an engineer, and then yeah, it does get revived immediately, but Ultra Num, they need more than this, and they're a little bit trapped. Grim is already back. Oh, what is their play? That looks like they're going to try and dodge the Ranger, I think, and just directly push onto the Waterfall. I think that is actually probably a fairly smart play from Num, if they can get a quick kill on moves. He's already used Renewed Focus, so his cooldowns might be a little bit low if they can get that kill and snowball this fight they can absolutely uh Ooh, still beyond revealing himself out of the shadow if he's gonna go down and yeah this is definitely a much better play from ultronome they've kind of locked dark usa into this corner but 50 points left honestly dark usa might even win off of one node but the kill is not in their favor and it's gonna be a lot harder for them to do so beyond now gonna be going into downstate again still staying in the downstate he's gonna be cleaved out for sure nas trying to peel with the lich but they're not gonna be able to hold this node forever and if they lose any more players Honestly, the points differential could go back into favor here for Ultranum, but they're still holding onto this node just long enough. There's no way Corey gets decapped. 25 points left. I don't think Ultranum are going to be able to come back into it. No. And Dark USA may have just secured the map. They have. I don't think they can really get away with this. Ultranum is going to lose this one. I don't think the decap's even going to come through. In no. fact, Dark nice USA, game. they only need one node, so even if it does come through, it's not good enough. Ultranum narrowly missing out on this one. It was so, so close this time, just like last time but there it is there's the game dark usa are going to make this interesting we're going to be heading over to eu for the next series of games but oh my first goodness time in a1 so yeah today. that is the first win on the board for an na team into ultra num but it is going to be the advantage of num because we're going to have to transfer back to eu now uh, just to, for, to clarify, guys, you see those two numbers there above the score? That is so um, close. that is the meta score, as it were. That is the weighted scores from both of these teams actually added up uh, over the course of those two games. And uh, so basically the way this works is to determine who kind of gets to pick the map for the tiebreaker. Sorry, not the map, the server for the tiebreaker. We add up all of the points, right, across the board and um, points scored on the uh, opposing server, right? If you're an EU team on an A, they are multiple 
multiplied by 1.1. And Ultram coming out just slightly ahead of that. Uh, slightly ahead of that trade because of their uh, additional server point multiplier advantage. But of course, the inverse will now be true for Dark USA. So Dark USA will now, every point they get on EU, they'll be gaining additional points. Uh, as opposed to Num. So Num, they've got to try and close this out. They have to win both of these games uh, to make that a 3-1. Otherwise, we are going to be going to our tiebreaker for the best of five, which is always going to be played on Forest. But let's, let's go. Let's Dark USA win both. Look at that clock tower. They're standing proud. And this is one of my favorite shots, actually, we got from the teaser trailer in Master of the Arena. The trebuchet shot being tracked by the camera landing on that middle node. It's a real shame we will, probably won't see that in this game. But you never know. I think Angel's got a pretty good shot of that the other day, in fact. Uh, yeah, there we go. So it's good stuff. But right, here we go. Roy, give me some energy here. Are you ready to see this match? Because I certainly am. After two of some of the closest games I've seen in a long time, from both of these teams. I am very excited to see this match. Now, of course, this is going to be Ultranum's comfort pick. This is their favorite map from what we've seen so far. So Dark USA are really going to have to pull it out if they want to make any sort of dent in Ultranum's game. But we saw them do it in Lum Legacy. They beat them out there on a map that we thought they had a very good shot of winning. So we'll have to see what happens. But at the moment, Dark USA going to be playing here to win on EU. Ultranum looking to try and hold the map down, though, but Fly not going to be able to do anything on Mansion as Dark USA are going to anticipate it. Still, Clock Tower may go the way of Ultranum for free. No contest there as of yet from Dark USA. Yep, there it is. In fact, uh, Cran able to hold that down and get the job done. And once again, we are going to see that 1v1 consistently held by Steel pushing into the windmill and slowly getting the deke out there. The fence is actually allowed for usage, so, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll see an attempt of that from Capablanca. And I kind of like this. Instead of having have Floody in the team fight, instead of um, having him in the 1v1, but still, that Ranger, you can see it, the node has already been neutralized even while this team fight. So I think the pressure is really on for Ultimate. They've got to win this right now, actually. They have to win this fight, otherwise, they are going to find themselves losing the map. They've given up the node as well. Lich coming out now from Nosquare, and it's going to be pretty pressured here. Cran a little bit away from the rest from, from his Necro, actually. I'm not really sure how that split happened. Gorn is going to be able to port back away, though, and he will be into a pretty safe spot. Fly now here as well on the mid, and he's going to be putting some pressure now on the moobs, but. They're still pretty low, and they can't contest the node at the moment, so it will go the way of Dark USA. They're going to have to be very, very careful. They don't fall too far behind. Steel now going to get plus. This fly is going to come in there. Steel actually has to be careful himself. He might be in some danger. He does get a nice knockback, and he probably will be able to pour it out, but Nas and Moob's coming in just a little bit behind, and Steel will go down. Should see some res potential, but a really nice knock there from Capablanca. Into the tornado from Cran, and that almost is the decap actually on Windmill, but it is going to be the kill confirmed. Lich now coming out from Gornet, and we will see if Ultranum are going to be able to convert this into any more kills, or if it's just going to be the one on Steel. Either way, though, they will have a map advantage for a little bit, but Floody now needs to be careful getting locked down here by Beyond and Grimjack, and they got to make sure they don't trade a kill for a kill on the map. Yeah, Ultranum, they need to figure out how to handle this Ranger. They need to figure out it, it out quickly. Because, as you say, right, they haven't really been able to gain much out of that kill on the steel. They have, of course, reclaimed the windmill, but the map was in the favor of Dark USA the entirety of that little engagement. And, you know, now they're going to try and take this team fight. And moves, she does get bit bursted pretty damn hard there. But once again, we're going to see that Ranger just start to rotate over to the windmill yet again. But actually, that's a big fear there. And that should be a kill on moves there. Moves getting isolated away from his team and Cran. Going for the stop immediately, not leaving anything up to chance. But the windmill will get decapped here by Steel, even though their Firebrand has been eliminated. Mansion going to get decapped as well, and Nas now going to be on the run. He's so very low. His heal coming up in a couple of seconds, but it doesn't look like anyone from Ultron. I'm actually going to chase him down. That's a little bit of a, I'd say, misplay there, but Fly was over at Mansion, so it's going to be obviously harder for them to lock it down. He actually might know he does get Nas down. He matches him perfectly. There's going to be a fear coming out, but Ooh, Fly will be able to res. avoid that beyond coming in, though, and yeah, Moobs will be able to res that, so it Shout does slow him down a little bit, unless Floody can come in. Fly going for a tornado coming up from the Elixir X on to Nas from Floody, and that is going to continue to keep him in downstate. Cran coming over as well, but it looks like they're not going to be contesting that res, and Nas will get back up on his feet. A little bit of excitement there for a second, but unfortunately, it is going to be confirmed. We will see Windmill going back the way of Ultram, and it looks like they're really, really playing defensively here. They don't want to over-rotate into Vanshin. They don't really want to continue to press forward. They want to make sure that they have their side of the map secured. Unless, of course, that was just a little bit of miscommunication, and, and both the, the players kind of split up there, but either way, it was Cran kind of pushing into that, and 
Saw Fly and Floody begin to leave it, but it is going to be again a fight for the Clock Tower as Moobs gets onto the node. Uh, that was a great stealth uh, from beyond, kind of disorientating Ultram. They weren't really able to see where that down body ended up, and so they just kind of gave it up, and I think just played defensively once again, as you say, trying to play safe and just continue to maintain control of this game. They do immediately give up the uh, give up the Clock Tower. I think they're a little bit worried. I think they're a bit scared of the team fight actually. I I'm surprised to see them give that up so easily and kind of wait for uh, their full force to maybe try and take out Nos. Nos actually with no shroud does have his heal, but he's getting chained CC right. Does he get it? He does get his heal, but he's still under so much pressure now from Ultram. They want to get that kill. They want to take out that Necromancer. The Worm Kite, though, should save Nos. It does, but Fly is still on him. Cran going to go down, though, right before he does. There's Vaporform available, and the Stomp coming out from Fly and Garnet. They do get it, rallying Cran, so he's going to be back in the game, but still, that was a very, very close call, and Cran is still going to be pressured. Grimjack trying to hunt him down, and the Node's still going to be in control here. For Dark USA, the kill on the Necromancer just wasn't enough to confirm it. They have regrouped, though, and they should be looking to get back into it. But yet again, we see a kill kind of wasted here from Ultranum. Cran just able to get on here to contest as Fly brings Beyond away towards Mansion, trying to go for a decap, but it's not going to happen. And they're still fighting to get this known back before Nosh can get back to the fight, but they're wasting time. They're losing time, and Moobs is now going to be under a little bit of pressure. Has the RF available to get him out if he needs it, but looks like he doesn't. Fly going to be going in maybe for some pressure here or looking for a decap, but he's going to actually reveal himself in the Firebrand, so no decap potential there. Still, getting some pressure out onto Moobs before the fight starts is going to be good, but the counter pressure now, the counter spike there from beyond is going to be even better. Windmill still secure, but only just here now by Capablanca into steel. One more tick, and that would be the decap coming out, and Clock Tower just going to be picked up here now by Ultranum. Dark USA doing an excellent job of only losing one player at a time. They're not allowing themselves to get staggered, and they're not allowing themselves to get snowballed. And I think yeah. both Nos and Moobs in particular are doing a good job of when one of them dies, the other doesn't, right? The other disengages almost immediately. And that allows the team fight of Dark USA to not completely collapse in on itself when something goes a little bit wrong. And Cran, actually, he's going to get liched to death. He's got Misform, but does he have a port? Can he get out of that? No, he's got nothing. And he is going to get eliminated immediately. There's no way. That is going to get rid of it. Wow, he just falls over immediately. I think he actually did get the, the misform bug there, which caused him to take down penalty, uh, which he otherwise probably shouldn't have done, which is why he ended up dying so fast there. But still, excellent damage there and excellent cleave coming out there from Dark USN. Once again, this game is just, it's just ridiculously close. It really is. Ultram ahead, but Dark USA with the only cap on the board, they will find themselves ahead very, very soon. And Fly gets caught there beyond B. Looking to finish that off there with a bit of damage coming in from Nos. It's going to kill him, the thief. Uh, Floody actually might... Oh, that border connecting on Grimjack allows Floody to get the decap on Mansion. That was very, very nicely done, but we will see the map still in control here from Dark USA. Fly is still going to be out for another five seconds as Ultranum try to bring the fight over towards Windmill. And I don't know if we're going to see Dark USA really contest that too much. They are starting to rotate in, but I think that might be more to just get Steel out than really fight this. However, Gordon going pretty low. We will see a nice burst coming out now from beyond onto him with the Kanye Thief. Good knockback there from Capablanca to get a little bit of distance, but moves now and Steel coming back into the node. We will see Fly coming back in off a of respawn, so will be five versus four as Grimjack still making his way all the way from the other side of the map and Moobs going to be forcing the RF and this might be what Ultranum needs. An overextension here from Dark USA could flip the map back in their favor. Moobs after the RF is going to be under a lot of pressure here from Fly but the peel coming out from Nos and Grimjack is still going to be good. Fly kind of pressured back towards the node trying to chase beyond down. Steel going to be pretty low on the node as well but Capablanca just cannot find the kill and Fly gets turned on now. The burst from beyond is going to take him out. Floody here potentially should be able to get the res. No, the glyph going to come through first from Cran. Grimjack still going to be on the node but while all this is happening the map still going Going to be held for Dark USA. The points are getting much more disparate, and it's going to be now over a 60, almost 80 point lead here for Dark USA. Windmill goes their way, and Steel potentially gets locked out here, but the swoop going to bring him away for the safety for now. And Dark USA looking so good on Kylo. Uh, he's completely fine. And this is this is Ultranum's map pick. And they're just not able to rotate around this. And I, I really, I, just to emphasize this, I think Steel Rage is completely screwing over Ultranum insanely hard right now by just having that 1v1 and keeping the conditioned Revenant out of these team fights. It's not where Capablanca wants to be. He wants to be in there getting kills and trying to secure damage uh, within these encounters. But it's just not happening. He's forced to just be on the sides, kind of trolling into that range of for all eternity. It's not working. Massive tornado coming out there onto moves from Cran. They should be able to get that kill. He's got, there's only a few more little heals left and that is going to be it. Beyond B going to go for the rest. Wait, do they, uh, oh the no, the dude, this is a choke. Oh, that was, why did they go for the stop there instead of the cleave? Oh, Numb is, amp they, they are actually tilted, man. Like there's no way that was, oh, that was a very bad decision, I think, to not go for the cleave. Like getting the revive on moves. He is back up there. He doesn't have a lot of cooldowns, so they can certainly kill him again, but Beyond B might 
might be able to get the DK over and Windmill Fly is going to be able to match it. But that point disparity is just going up and up and up. Numb. Oh, they are struggling here. They need to gather themselves into this game. They have not got long. They do manage to get moves out. And the cleave should be great from the Lich. But Gornet is very pressured. Gets knocked away and moves. Nearly getting rose. But no, Grim not able to get there quite in time. And Gornet in a little bit of trouble. Cran trying to heal him up there. And the heal skill coming up from Gornet is able to save this. But the deficit. It's over 100 points at this point, Roy. I'm not sure if Numb can come back in this. If there's any map that could do it on besides Legacy or maybe Temple with a couple of buffs, it would be this one. But again, the way that Dark USA have been playing around Ultranum so far this game and, and honestly beating them out and, and mostly kills Floody almost going down here. Beyond, though, does get turned on by Fly at the last second. If they could find a kill on this Thief, it would allow them to break out of the map. But Steel going to confirm the Windmill Cap with Beyond just going down. No, Steel actually going to go for the res over the cap and he... Probably will be able to get that. The stability going to prevent him from getting CC'd away, but I don't know. It's it's not looking good for Ultradom so far, and Beyond is going to be back up in this game. Uh, that was a good res there from Steel. Definitely the right choice, and Beyond might end up going down. Their fly is on him, but Floody is down first, and Steel might just be able to get that stomp out. Yes, he gets it, and I think that's borderline GG at this point um, for Dark USA. They should be able to go 2-1 up here in this game very, very shortly. We're going to need to see Ultram play all three nodes, and Fly will probably be able to get the decap, but Gornet's going to go down here on mid, and Cranny might be able to get the Glyph. No, I think he's going to get CC'd far too much that time. But no, he does actually manage to pull it off somehow, but Gornet is once again going to fall here, I think, on mid. Shroud keeps him alive for a little bit longer, but he's got no kite potential left over except the worm. Oh, the worm actually bugged! Didn't take it where he wants to. Oh, you really hate to see it. Uh, unfortunately there for Gornet, and there we go. He does end up going down. No glyph this time, and Fly did get the full cover. Actually, Cran able to hold the clock tower contested, so if the windmill does get captured here, that is good enough to win the game, but with a player down on the board, it's going to be so, so difficult for, um, for Ultram to be able to hold on to that, and yeah, there it is. There's the single cap that Dark USA needs to win this game, and even the windmill not quite in the position of Ultranum just yet. And uh, we now see Grimjack rotating over to the mansion. He'll be able to get that almost for free. There's no way anyone from Numb will be able to contest that. And this is going to be it. Dark USA. They are fighting. Ping means nothing, Roy, to Dark USA. They are demonstrating such a dominance over the team fight control over getting these kills. That Ultranum very much struggling here. Uh, to generate value on the map. And to be honest, I I, I think Dark USA is looking very strong. I, I actually think that, you know, the points are relatively close. But to be honest, I kind of think that, in a way, like, rotationally speaking, Dark USA kind of had it all their own way in this match. Absolutely. And I think the big thing here, you touched upon this a little bit, is definitely Steel really shutting down point gain that they can get on their side of the map and forcing them to kind of play on one side of the map. And when they're not winning these team fights, and that's going to be game. This is this is game number three going the way to Dark USA, making it 2-1. And this is on EU as well. We have to keep that in mind. So they're taking the first EU game, especially on Kylo 2 here from Arsenal. But I think even more important, you know, you, you mentioned this a little bit, having Capablanca out of these fights means that beyond B's condition pressure is actually so much more impactful. They don't have the resistance coming out of the pain absorption here on the Connie River. They don't have him pulling conditions from them and then transferring it back. And I think that's a huge mistake. I think they re Floody obviously so much impact in a lot of these fights on the grenade spam. He's able to burst down quite a bit of, of damage here, quite a bit of health from these players. But I, I think they need to have Capablanca in these fights to try and counter that Condi Thief, and it's just not happening. So, you know, we're going to hopefully see them switch something up, but it's now a, a race here against the games here for Ultranum. We were really expecting to maybe see Dark USA having to struggle a little bit to take games, but now Ultranum are about to go down into the lower bracket to fight Team USA if Dark USA take this game. And not only that, but the points... The score is now going to be in favor of Dark USA by, I believe, over about 100 points, which means that even if Ultranum do win this game, there's a very good chance we're going to be going back to NA for the tiebreak round. Who knows what can happen? This map is certainly not decided, but either way, we actually now see the Reaper coming out of Gornet. They've changed at least oh, one thing up. Okay. We're going to see what happens there, but I really do want to see... Oh, and I think, yeah, they, they've heard me as well. Floody has swapped off the Grenade. <laughs> He's now going more for the 1v1 build, and I think we're going to see Capablanca getting involved in these fights, which I really like, because again, that pulsing resistance, that ability to pull Condis and transfer them back is going to be absolutely deadly here with the uh, Beyond B, the Condi Thief, getting involved in these fights. That being said, I'm sure Dark USA are going to anticipate some of this, and they're going to be a little bit more ready than I think Ultranum may have expected. So let's see what happens in this game. If Ultranum lose this, that's it. They're going down to the lower bracket. If Dark USA lose it, though, we are going to a tie-break round.
Move, breaking out the special source there, Roy. I saw a line of warding, and actually already Cabo Blanca in a lot of trouble. Um, getting annihilated. He's already down. What? Well, this is a disaster for Ultronum in this Wait, first the game. Misses. Wait, he just missed it. Oh no. Oh no. No, I, I, I'm. This is just a flat. This is just a fat tilt, isn't it? I mean, this, they're just tilted at this point. That is. That's an absolute right nightmare. Right now, what they need to do is they need to leave the snow. They need to regroup. They need to wait for Capablanca to respawn. They need to reset their mental because clearly that break in between matches was not enough. We do see a really good decap from Fly, keeping his team competitive. But mid will go the way of Dark USA, and that's a great way for them to start this game. Getting the kill, burning that glyph. Steel going to be a little bit pressured here against Floody. We do see Gornet turning on him with the Reaper, but it is going to be advantageous here now for Dark USA pushing into this node four versus three until Capablanca can get back and make it even. Nice to see onto Gornet as well. And Cran needs to try to heal and peel for his team, but again, no glyph for this next fight, at least for another minute, means that he won't be able to rally his team. And Gornet is going to be going into downstate. Again, the pressure from Dark USA is looking so good. Grimjack with an excellent knock. Moves a little bit low, but Grimjack should be able to get this stomp. He does get interrupted for the last second, but it's not going to matter. Moves a little bit low, and Grimjack will to go peel for him, but the bleed on Gornet is going to be good, and Dark USA still moving ahead in this game. Oh no, I, I really genuinely feel that Ultram, they're a little bit rustled. Dark USA getting under their skin, Gornet getting taken out there almost immediately, and these fights are just not working for Ultram at all. Gornet is now back, and Dark USA absolutely have to be mindful of overextending here, and Fly doing it. He is now doing a lot better on this map, actually able to uh, control the map a little bit more now with Ultram even having a map uh, a map advantage here by having that two cap and they were able to restain there and not lose an additional player while Gornet uh, was still on respawn. He is now back and they can start to take this fight. And I think this is a time when Dark USA needs to start thinking about backing off their moves. It's burning through a lot of his good abilities there and he has to be very, very careful. Of course, the massive power damage of the Reaper is going to be very, very scary for them indeed. Absolutely, and this is Ultranum's chance to kind of come back in, but Steel gets the decap on Dragon into Floody, and that's going to certainly shut down more point gain. Ultranum have kept the map in their favor, though. They are going to be able to keep themselves a little bit ahead, but buffs now coming out, and it looks like Dark USA going to be building themselves in a position to already get the shield buff. And we might actually see Grimjack going for the bottom buff. No contest as of yet here from Ultranum. They will be able to take mid, and they will have some map presence on the map here, but they're, they're staying too long here at mid. They're slowing down. They don't realize that the buffs are coming up, maybe. Ooh. And that's going to be both buffs going the way of Dark USA for free. That is very, very rough. For those who maybe aren't aware of the terrifying power of those artifacts, that's 20% extra damage and a massive boost to health and armor. And these fights have already been tough for Numb. Ooh, they're about to get a whole lot harder for them. Unless they can maybe get a quick kill, maybe pick no, moves off here. He is a little bit isolated. And of course, um, has a little bit less counter pressure uh, playing that staff build with the Rune of Speed. But that is working out well for me because he's able to kite very effectively. And Gornet is once again under pressure. And Cran is kind of following suit there too. Gornet popping off the Lich there to try and get a little bit of pressure to save that Tempest. He's able to do that quite effectively. And Cran is able to wriggle away. Good stealth there coming up from Fly there as well. But Gornet is now going to be the next focus for Dark US. Say. Moves now pressured though. He is starting to run out of stuff. They're just the healing tome left over. But Gornet, he is very, very low. Just 30% health. Is there a glyph from Cran? We're going to have to see that, I think. He precasts it and he gets it. There it is. Full reviving him there. Great play there from Cran. He is getting a little bit of that mojo back. And still, Ultram holding two nodes, or rather one node, and contesting this one here on the dragon. I think Dark USA, maybe uh, they need to get this kill pretty quickly. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves overextending. I think the stomp should come through though. There it is. The Reaper executes Gornet. On it. Yeah, Fly is still pretty pressured out here. He is going to be taken out, and this is honestly, I think, the snowball that Dark USA were looking for, and if they can continue to find kills here, as well as make the map even, as we see Beyond able to freely decap and now full cap middle node, that is going to put them back into the lead. About a 40-point deficit, so Ultram have done a nice job so far of keeping the map even, but they're unable to win any fights into Dark USA right now. The buff's still going to be allowing them to have a little bit of an advantage, and unfortunately for Ultram, they really have to start winning fights because Dark USA are forcing them into these fights, and they don't have a choice. And at the moment, it's, it's just not going well for them. We will see Fly coming back in in about five seconds. Nas actually going to be pretty pressured. And again, Dark USA, you need to be mindful of extending. But Gornet going to be just as low, if not lower, than Nas right now. Capablanca a little bit separated from the rest of his team. Grimjack still putting pressure on Gornet. Nice Shadow Refuge from uh, Beyond as well to get Nas nice, nice and healthy up there. And we do see the points now going the way of Dark USA. Steel just sitting on top of the node. He's going to continue to contest it. He is going a little bit low. He does need to be careful as Fly has now gotten back into the map. But Steel going to go down. Are we going to be able to see them contest us? I don't think so. That should be the kill almost certainly confirmed. But again, Dark USA with a nice discipline. They're going to be able to leave this without losing anybody else. It's hopefully a good CC though coming out from Capablanca. But it's not going to be enough. And 
All right, now Ultranum are starting to fight from behind for the first time this game. At least for the nodes, the kills have always been in Dark USA's favor. Uh, buffs coming up in just a few moments, but I think USA is going to be able to contest that fairly effectively. And he, they're just going to get the sword for free again. Oh, Nam is not doing a great job that they're going to try and prioritize the node over that. But Beyond B is going to be able to shut that down. But Grimjack is going to be able to lock down the sword of reaping simply for free. There's going to be a pretty big fight contesting the shield. And moves does go down. Steel looking to go for the res. There's no way he's going to be able to get that. There is so much damage coming out there. But oh, they get, USA gets the shield. Oh, they were so focused on the kill. Both buffs are gonna fall uh, to Dark USA yet again and that kill on moves is nice but beyond B decapping Floody not able to make it in time oh that is a really unfortunate position to be in if you're ultra them right now like you know they need to get more than this they need to get another kill and well, it looks I'm like not, they're going to well, do that on Nos, but again, <laughs> it, it, it might not be enough. They do get the decap here at Far Nos, back up here with the shield as he was able to get it. Really nice freeze, though, there from Gornet is going to stop him from being able to move away. And we should again see Nos falling before Moobs can get back here as he was trying to pressure out Fly over at the Lion node. Nos, though, he's kiting for all he's worth, and he actually ports away. There's no way he gets out of this Fly going for the chase there, but Moobs as well. And I don't know if what Ultranum is doing. They're just so slow right now. They got zero value out of that kill and moves, and Nas is going to get away. Grimjack and moves there to peel for him. Side nodes are certainly going to be pressured here at the moment. You neutral map state with one node apiece, but right now Ultranum again fighting from behind, and they have no advantage on the map. In fact, they're disadvantaged because the buffs are still going to be in Dark USA's favor. And they'll be expiring fairly shortly. Uh, but still, you know, the, the damage kind of has been done at this point. You know, Dark USA have carved themselves out quite a nice lead. I think credit to Ultram for just keeping tempo with them uh, for the time being, waiting for them to be over. Grimjack, though, he's going to find himself in a good position, able to 1v2 uh, the Reaper and the Tempest from Ultram. That's going to lock them down there, and that's going to need to be that's going to need to be matched at some point uh, by uh, by Numb. So far, they have done a good job. They're going to reclaim the Dragon. That's going to put themselves in the lead if they can hold on to this map state. They are looking to gain here into this game. Gornet, though, is going to be pressured as, of course, there's going to be a brief outnumber while uh, it takes a little while for Cameron Blanca to get into the try and peel for that Necromancer. Crown is going to have to try and contest the node. He's going to, he might have to give it up there and try and peel for that Reaper. Does the heal come through into Gornet? He does actually get it. That is really big that Gornet was able to get that, but it gets pulled back in by moves and once again that Necromancer is going to go and is it going to be the Glyph? Oh, the Glyph does come through. The Earth when it had the big enough radius there to actually grab him even though he got knocked back. That is a pretty nice moment there for Ultranum if they can chain this into a kill and then maybe turn this fight on its head. They'll be in a good spot. Nos getting heavily pressured there. Shroud running out. Heal skill is well, but he's getting mega CC'd. The kite should be good, though. Can he get it? He can a little bit, but no. He teleports right into the fire over from Cran, and Cran will be able to misform something like that. There's no recovery there. And Numb should be able to secure that middle node yet again, just as the buffs are coming up. But oh, will they be able to get even one of them? Let's find out. Beyond B getting a big plus onto Floody. And Gornet and Fly now racing to catch up there. If they can get a kill onto the Thief, that'll be fantastic for them. And it looks like they're going to as well, beyond maybe overextending a little bit after that lost fight with Nas going down, and they will find the kill on the Thief. This is now the best place that Ultram has been in, and even more importantly, Fly got a huge monumental decap at Lion while that team fight was going on, right under Beyond's nose. Really nice job, Cran just, he gets the shield buff! Nas and Move just half a second Ooh. too late. It's still going to be sword available, but for the first time, we see Ultram now actually a little Fly bit ahead. Get it. Mid just about to be capped as well for them, and this... Looking like Fly will be able to get the top bottom buff rather as well. Oh, this is it. very, very good for Ultron. But again, keep in mind, the points differential are very important here because if they don't shut down the point gain from Dark USA enough, even if they win this game, they'll be going back to NA for the tiebreaker. Yeah, they absolutely will. We saw how close it was after those past few games there. And this team fight is going to erupt. Of course, Ultram should be heavily favored thanks to possessing both of those buffs. Let's see if they can make that happen. Grimjack already very pressure having to back oh, off a little deleted. bit. Oh, wow. Oh, that, was, that was a lot of damage. That, that's a lot of damage, Roy. Uh, the Reaper and the Thief. And of course, I'm going to take it out right before he gets oh, to the arm. This well. The tornado sending him both the Reaper buff there. And now Ultranome are starting to feel themselves a little bit more. They're starting to close the gap as well. Increase the distance that they've gotten. Grimjack going to be alone here to hold the tide against three players but with four, three buffs, excuse me, two buffs as you've mentioned, the decap comes out very swiftly and Ultranum are looking to put this map to bed.
They absolutely need to push that kill, though, and even push that cap to end the game as quickly as possible. They they really want to make sure they're playing on EU again, I think, because they are certainly, uh, they have their match in Dark USA. They want to push for that third. I don't think they can really get it, though. The respawns from Dark USA are good. They have now come through, so they're going to have to try and settle for it being a mere neutral setup, at least for the time being. They now do actually pick up a kill on Beyond B. Uh, Fly was able to grab that, and if they can maybe push into that and deny the cap on the line, that would be amazing. They're trying to contest it right now, I think. Yeah, Cran is is doing a good job of that, but I think it will end up falling to Dark USA. Yes, it does. And now, I think the question is, how greedy is Numb feeling? Are they going to push for that third node? I think they actually want to here, but they might end up losing mid uh, if they aren't careful there. And yeah, we do see Ultram kind of backing off a little bit there temporarily. Uh, maybe a free decap from Fly. Does Fly actually get that? I don't think he shouldn't do. No, Beyond B porting at the exact right time to deny that the team fight start starting to fight uh, off the point right now. And actually, the Lich comes out now. Could that be a kill on moves? No, moves does have Reflect available. That will completely nullify the damage there from Gornet, but he still has that powerful Reaper Shroud available to try and get something done, and uh, Dark USA were able to decapture mid there. The Ranger holding firm. Ultram still 100 points up, but Cran very, very pressured right now. Trying to back off is able to do so. Fly will be able to get the decap as well, but I think it's kind of getting to the point where even if Ultram wins, I think we're going to be going back to NA for the tiebreaker on uh, Forest here, uh, Roy, especially if this decap comes through. It doesn't, but... Certainly an interesting omen uh, for the next game. Nice cliff there from Cran on a Gornet to help continue to pressure this fight out. But yeah, I think at this point, the points are just not really going to be in Ultranum's favor. It looks like they're probably going to take this game, but it isn't a sure thing for sure. Gornet going to be a little bit pressured out in this fight. He does need to be careful. Cran's already used the glyph. He gets a nice and mobile, but it's not going to be enough. Cran has to go for the hard res now. Let's see if Gornet's going to be back up in the game. Some CC coming out on top of it. And the rest of Dark USA converging, but it's just not in time. Capablanca is going to be there as well to help peel out. Cran will be able to keep his necker alive, but the map state now completely neutral until middle is now going to go the way of Dark USA, and they're still fighting back into it because they definitely could still win this game. Just under three minutes left, about less than 100 points in a difference for the lead here between Ultranum and Dark USA. They, they could come back into this game. It looks like almost certainly the tiebreaker would be on an A, but... Dark USA don't even want to go to a tiebreaker. They just want to close it out here. Side nodes still going to be contested. Beyond actually going to be able to pick up the line for free. And that will put the map state back completely in Dark USA's favor. Nuss just able to pour it out. Fly's going in for the kill, though. And he is going to find it. The Reaper buff will be able to close that and greet for down. Unfortunately, Nas is going to be taken out very, very quickly. That might just be enough here for Ultranum to come back into this map. We do see Fly as well able to contest Lion. Grimjack going pretty low. Does have the Glen Heal just to keep him alive for a couple more seconds. Ultranum needs 60 points left to close this game out. And they should get the decap here on mid. But they've got no pressure really on the other nodes. They don't actually need it, though, uh, as such, right? And we see that Ultranum, uh, they are going to win this game just by, by the time run. A single cap, even if Ultranum doesn't have any, isn't enough for them to win this game. They need two. And Floody, he is having a bit of trouble into the into steel here, but actually that Elixir gun popping off there, countering the block with Fly coming in for the plus. Steel is going to have a lot of trouble in surviving here. One cap would certainly seal the deal for Ultram if they're able to get that kill. Uh, but Steel very wise. going to disengage with a glorious eagle leap away from the node floody looking to get that cap can he get it not just yet beyond now coming in for the plus two making this an even fight but still dark usa needs more than this they need to make sure they get two caps and actually uh there is to be honest, they need to be looking at a third if they want to win because they do not have a long time at all left only a minute left in this game and i'm not sure if things are going to be moving quick enough for that to happen a huge burst coming out on the flight that condition thief from beyond b is providing a huge amount of value to them but Ultranum is holding firm. We might be looking at a timer game. Both of these teams playing their hearts out, fighting for their lives. None of them want to go down to the loser's bracket. They want to stay up, uh, you know, and go on to face. Unfortunately, going five. down is exactly where Steel is. <laughs> He's in downstate beyond. You're going to have to try and 1v1 into Floody, and that should be the node confirmed here. The points as well, just keeping it close. I don't think 30 seconds is enough for a 60-point difference, and with that node confirmed, that is going to be game here. Number four, going the way of Ultranum, but honestly, it's closer than they would have liked, and it still means that we're going over to an A for the tiebreak round. It's going to be advantage, Dark USA. Indeed it is, and that is why it is so important. You, it's not just about winning, Roy. It is about stomping your opponents here in Master of the Arena. You want to make sure that you destroy them, and that is not something that Ultram has been able to do here. They've been able to just barely get these two wins here, uh, you know, in this series, but they were very, very close games, and Dark USA, they had a significant victory in the previous match uh, that Ultram wasn't able to quite match, in fact. 
So there we go. We're going to have to transfer back to NA for the final map, which is going to be on Forest. In the 55 and Team USA, we've gone all the way. We've gone the distance here. Ooh. Five games, three on an A, two on a U. This is what it comes down to. Whoever loses this is going down to face Team USA. Whoever wins this is going on to team, face Team Rank 55 Dragons. And, well... And we'll this is what we want to see, Roy. We want to see these ultra close, ultra intense matches here in the global finals of Master of the Arena. I think that's what everyone wants to see. And a uh, bit of a change up in terms of rotations. We're going to see Grimjack crossing over directly into Floody and no cross response from Ultranum. So Dark USA are going to have a little bit of a map advantage immediately. And actually, Floody, he's in so much trouble. Gets bursted by Beyond B, already forced to Elixir S. And he might even end up going down here. Great pull there from Grim. The conditions are very, very strong. Fly, look at a trap impression, but I think that's actually going to be kill confirmed on oh, Floody right at the start of the game. There it is. Floody goes into the downset. And wow, that is really going to turn the pressure up immediately at the start of this match. Absolutely. And Fly actually doing a really nice job of almost taking out Beyond, who does get into the Shadow Refuge, and he's going to be okay. So Fly needs to now leave this. But that's going to be side notes confirmed here for Dark USA. Team fight will certainly going to be contested. And it looks like we are going to see Null Ultranum take middle node, but they're going to have a map disadvantage for at least a couple more seconds as Floody just going to be getting back involved in the map. And Dark USA playing that opening very, very well. Beyond still pressured a little bit on this, and we are going to see him maybe not go as hard as he might. Moob's actually going to be pretty low here. He still has RF available, but that's going to be it. Procti doesn't make the jump either, and that should be a kill Ooh. confirmed. The Reaper Shot 5 here from Gordon is going to freeze him down, and almost going down to his Moob's. They're still looking for the kill, but they just can't find it. The peel from Beyond, and Nas is going to get their Firebrand out, and Dark USA doing such a good job, but Beyond, unfortunately, cannot... He said the same as moves. He is going to go down. State ports back to the node, so they're forced to bleed him or cleave him out, rather. But we are going to see at the moment. Wait, Beast started up by Grimjack, and he's going to get it. 25 points he additional does now on the board here. Hand's still going to be contested by Steel. Floody didn't get there in time to decap, and Dark USA right now are playing very well around Ultranum. Yeah, that's an absolutely rip-roaring start there from Dark USA. 70-point lead already. Looking to get a kill on Fly. They find it. Cran should be able to revive that fairly easy with the Mistform, and he absolutely does. But an immediate condition burst from beyond is certainly going to have Fly thinking twice about pushing back in there for the time being. And, and I think what we're seeing developing is that Dark USA is almost going to not exactly avoid the team fight, but not necessarily take them the entire time. We're going to see, Cr uh, no, sorry, Cram. We're going to see Grimjack almost play as a second side noder and um, just get those free points ticking away there on the mine. Now the kill on moves does come through there, but immediately to have their good shadow refuge. But he is still under so much pressure. Not enough healing is going to be available. I think Gornet going for some big damage there. Good uh, projectile destruction there, shutting that down. But Tornado is going to be good there from Cram, and that should be a kill. And that one is going to be significantly harder to rest. But actually, Fly goes down, but does rally from the kill onto moves. Ultranum looking to clean this up. Can they get it? The one they want more. They need more than this because moves will be respawning soon and that's going to be a very heavy concern for Ultram. They absolutely need to go further than this. Can they find a kill? What's going to be the next one? Moves is now back and still there has not been much progress been made here for Ultranum. No, and he's going to have his RF available for this team fight as well, so he is going to be able to get into it. Steel going to be pressured out pretty hard, and the decap will come through here. And i got to be honest, as long as they can continue to get kills out here, this is actually a little bit more of an advantage here uh, for Ultronome. I think they will have the team fight available because of that Condi Thief being able to match beyond. They won't lose out on the Condi pressure overall, even though Gornet is on the Reaper compared to Nas and the Core Necro, because Grimjack is the one holding that far node. So keeping both the re the the... the Revenants out of these team fights is going to actually end up, I think, being beneficial for Ultronome. And they do get the hench, but they've got to be careful. Steal a little bit low, fly on top of him. He might go down, but there's a lot of pressure onto the Ultronome players, too. Cran and Floody both going to be a little bit low. They need to find a kill on these Dark USA players, and they've got to do it now. They can hold this map state for the rest of the game, and it will win. But Floody going to be very pressured. Cran trying to heal him out, but the Elixir S is going to be procked out from Floody. Gornick going in for burst, but Nas now going to answer that with a Lich his, of his own. And He's going to be able to put quite a bit of pressure. Floody still so very, very low. Fly trying to get some pressure out into it. Beyond going to be pressured here, but he's going to be able to stay on top of Floody. And Floody almost going down super speed, just getting him out. But the decap is going to come out and hinge, and that will shut down the point gain here from Ultranum. They've made it a neutral map yet again, and no kills have come through. Beyond starting to push away here as Fly does start to lock him out of this node. Fly might be able to find a kill on the Thief, but he's going to be now back to Henge again as it's still going to be a neutral state. Steel not going to be able to be pressured away from the node just yet from Ultron. Beyond comes back to the node, but he's very low. The bleeding just not going to be able to take him out. His Shadow Refuge is going to save him yet again. And again, neither team able to find an edge here. It is so evenly matched in these fights across the Tempest. 
the clock is ticking for USA, right? They need to kind of start to win. Otherwise, the Tempest will eventually outvalue. But there we go. We do see that kill. I think the Glyph is available from Cran. Yes, does get that fully healing him up all the way there. And that is going to be a kill onto Beyond. That's probably pretty resable, though, I think. Uh, the Batchy Fly going for some pretty nice cleave. But Cran not able to get there either. Floody firing those more to kit. Can they actually get enough damage there? Gornet cleaving for all his worth from down there. And actually, they are going to be able to secure the kill onto <gasps> Beyond. But Grim gets another oh, beast. Get stolen. Wait, wait, no. Oh! Please get stolen by Mushroom. Kappa Blanca made the rotation over. That's big. Jack, we started up the beast, but Kappa Blanca is able to oh. steal it. Oh, a big steal coming out there. Especially at the same time that Beyond goes down and they've closed the gap considerably. Steal again going to be very low. They really need to find the kill. They do get the kill now. Gordon with the Lich. And that should be the cleave. And Ultronum now are looking to take this game back. The tornado ripping it apart. They actually kind of send them a little bit closer to the rest of Dark USA. But Beyond coming in as soon as the Ranger goes down is not good for Dark USA. They should be the node confirmed for them. And again, Kappa Blanca still able to hold mid down. Grimjack, though. I think he's thinking about going in for the 1v1 because he realized that maybe staying on mine isn't as ideal as he wants. It does open up mine to a decap from Fly, but I think Fly has to be involved in these team fights. Oh. And right now, Ultronum are winning them, so they kind of have to start putting some pressure on the rest of the node. And yeah, we're going to see the swap. This, they we're do try to leave. Yeah, yeah we're seeing Not the swap though. there. We're going to see the Ranger kind of replace Grim. Grim coming into the fight. Oh, let's get deleted. Oh, that's a massive kill. We're actually seeing a little bit of a stagger coming through there. Getting that kill is absolutely massive onto Nos and Ultronum looking to get in control of this game right now. We see the Thief from Beyond. He's going to try and rotate. We're going to see Dark USA try and rotate to mid and harass the Revenant. Uh, from Capablanca, that long protracted bloodbath on the henge, of course, going in favor of Ultronum. So Dark USA going to try and mix stuff up a little bit here. They want to go a little bit further and throw uh, Ultronum off as we approach the middle of this game. Cran going to support Floody there, making sure he doesn't die. And of course, that is going to be held quite firmly. But now it does look like Dark USA is going to go for another all-out fight on the henge yet again. But actually, Grim getting burst incredibly hard. He is able to survive quite effectively though. Gornet, though, is still on the hunt. But now he actually gets it turned around and he gets eliminated immediately. Is there a glyph? There is a glyph. But he gets shut down. Wait, no, 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 yeah, no, no, the stomp came through. The cleave comes out before Cran can get it and now he's going to be the one pressured. Floody going to be very low on the note as well. And that is 100% the decap coming through and it might even be a couple of kills. Dark USA still desperately holding on and I think Ultronum need to completely leave this node. They've unfortunately lost the team fight for the first time that they went to Henge. It was working out beautifully for them, but they've thrown it away. They're still fighting into it though. They don't want to give this up, but I'm not sure if that makes sense because Gornet is going to have to come across the entire map and Floody almost going down. Cran, no glyph available. Tornado coming through to try and peel Floody away, but Beyond is on top of him. I don't think Floody's going to be able to survive this. His healing turret just coming through, but it's going to get CC'd. Cran with the water overload, Ooh, but it just won't be good. enough. I don't think a fear ring on top of it too. And Floody goes down. And I think Ultronum may have just made a huge mistake trying to stay on that node. That is catastrophic. Fly is not going to make this decap in time either. Good rotation from Steel. Should be able to lock that down. And a beast coming through from Dark USA. Oh, I think this is getting into the terrifying zone for Ultranum. I think they've lost control. I think Dark USA, with those side nodes, they've bought themselves this win with just slowly being able to take that fight. Eventually, Num ran out of stuff. And I think Dark USA, it's looking good. A beast is going to be the response from Fly. He should be able to get that, but they need a decap. They need to secure a secondary node. And actually, Beyond maybe looking for the steal to return, you know, to uh, in recompense for the one that got stolen earlier on. But uh, Ultram, again, they're going to push this fight directly on the edge. They've obviously, they're obviously feeling confident into that. Let's see if they can make it work. But they don't have a choice, I don't think. They, they they have to push one of these two nodes. They, they're able to hold down mid, and I think now Floody swapping out with the the Revenant here from Capablanca doesn't make sense since obviously Grimjack is going to be in this fight too, so it'll be a, t a slightly different fight. It's going to be a little bit easier though, I think, for Ultronum to maybe dislodge them, but they're fighting against the clock because they need this double cap and they need to hold it for quite a while. Moobs is going to be going very low, but Gornet getting bursted down very heavily now by Beyond B. He's going to be fighting for his life. The Lich does come out, Cran trying to peel for him, but still 10 stacks of Torment's going to be ticking him down. He just gets into Shroud in time and there's so much damage on them. Capablanca also going to be a little bit pressured and there's just no return damage. The Fear pushing him into a wall and that's going to be Gornet going down. I don't no know glyph. if going to have the glyph available. Well, no, he's not going to be able to. They have to go for the hard res. Shadow Refuge comes down on top of it, but there's so much pressure. Can they get this res? Just barely they do, but Fly taking so much damage for it. He's starting to go for the cap on the node, and Tarek USA still looking to push them down. Moves, though, gets turned on, and they will have the kill, but they're still fighting against the clock, and they don't have the cap yet beyond with a really nice pull here coming out from Capablanca. is going to be able to push him into down state, and they do get the kill here. They need these kills to put the difference back up. Really nice Lightning flicks flash off from Kirk so back to the node. Fly, though, very low. The not, Lich not coming out now from Nas. They still don't have the cap, and they need it.
to be I, able to overtake. I'm not sure they can get it in time. Grim is very precious. If Grimjack dies, that's when things really do get a bit scary. There's no Glint Hill available. Can Archie Nom? Can they somehow pull this off, Roy? They might be able to. Is that going to be a kill on Grim? It should be. They should be able to get it. They knock off the point as well. The respawns are good. They are now coming through from Dark USA. There's not long left here. Nos actually in trouble. Nos goes down. Oh my god. Is this a last minute choke from Dark USA? I think it actually might be. Nos has been eliminated. Beyond B coming in there. Moves now in the mix as well. But still, we do need to see the cap here from Ultram. They must it's not get this. Enough time. They can't They can't get the decap on mine. I think that's game. Dark USA know this and they're just going to continue to contest it without the double cap here from Ultram. They're not going to have enough points. I don't think just based off of kills, moves will fall surely. But I don't think there's enough time for them to get the cap. I'm pretty sure that's it. No, Beyond respawns also are here. Over and he might get the decap. He needs to stop it. Wait, that's going to be a kill on Beyond. That will certainly help them. But... I don't think it's possible without it's the decap of mine. Th oh, it's no, not going to be enough. I don't think you can get it. Take it. Yeah, it's not going to... It Maybe if a, a beast spawns soon, maybe, in 18 seconds, if actually... No, if also They get the cap. Not time. That's game. Dark USA win. Oh, yeah, it's over. It's too much. Even with all these skills, fly even going down on mid. But this one's really... I mean, look at the point score. It's going to be crazy. The beast... Oh actually, God. if they can kill the beast instantly... No, wait, no, no. no it's not time. They've got five they're seconds. Gonna, oh, no, my no, they're God. Afk'd. That's it. No. <laughs> That's Dark, Dark USA. USA take it. Take it. And they are going to be moving on to phase 55. Ultranum falling to the lower bracket. Six points behind. Dark USA playing so well. Ultranum just not able to clutch it out at the last second. They were coming they back strong. they two more kills, that would have been game for Ultranum. Yeah. If they'd been able to get that oh, cap just a little bit earlier, that would have been... Brutal! Oh, man, what a game. <laughs> Honestly... I, I, okay, I, we still have four more sets left, which is kind of insane. T-Bot, you should probably get some water. But that might have been the best set of the entire tournament. Yeah.